Well, moments ago, NASA introduced its 2025 astronaut class, 10 candidates selected from a group of more than 8,000 applicants. Now, they will undergo nearly two years of training before they're sent off on missions to Mars as well as the moon. NBC News correspondent Marissa Parra joins me with more. Marissa, this is so exciting. I mean, tell us about who these newly minted astronauts are. Well, I can tell you more than half of them are women, Morgan, um, but these are extremely qualified candidates, obviously selected for many reasons. Many of them hold multiple degrees. Um, so when we look at their backgrounds, which again was just announced within the last half hour, we have lots of test pilots, but we also have a geologist. We have an anesthesiologist. And one of those candidates is actually one of the astronauts who flew on the SpaceX Polaris Dawn mission. And now she will make her way to becoming a NASA astronaut. So this is going to be two years of training, as you mentioned, Morgan. It's going to be everything you can imagine that an astronaut would need to know. Classes in geology, land and water survival, space health. They'll train in high performance jets. And then they will go on when they eventually graduate. They'll work on supporting other crew members who are flying in space, helping to develop the systems that are going to take humans to the moons and beyond. And then, of course, the hope is that they will eventually get assigned to their own mission with their own crew headed to either the moon, Morgan, or eventually to Mars. And keep in mind, these 10 candidates were selected out of 8,000 applicants that made the cut, Morgan. And that's just the people who applied, 8,000. Not to mention all the people who maybe dreamed of it, like myself, and did not apply because we realized we don't have what it takes. So 8,000 people applied, 10 were selected. Two more years, uh, if they graduate, they'll be welcomed into the newest class of flight-eligible NASA I astronauts. mean, just tremendously cool. I know that NASA is also, though, Marissa, previewing its upcoming Artemis II mission that would send astronauts on a 10-day trip around the moon. So how is that mission expected to advance human space exploration? And, and when? Right. I mean, when's it supposed to happen? So, uh, great questions. I want to point out that that will be the closest humans are brought to the moon since 1970 with Apollo 13. And because there has been so much time, technology has evolved, and of course, our mission back to the moon is so different. We want to build, and by we, I mean NASA, the United States, wants to build a base on the moon. So there's a lot that's different between now and the last time we were on the moon in 1970. And so they have to do a lot differently. So this is a very technical thing, Morgan. There's human lives at stake, which is part of the reason why I guess we could call it sort of a test run, if you will. They're going to do a slingshot. They're going to do orbit. They're not going to land on the moon with Artemis 2, but they do hope to have humans on the moon with Artemis 3 by 2027 or 2028. And a lot needs to happen on time in order to make that happen. And as we've talked about, as Tom Costello has talked about, there's now yeah. a space race. China is trying to bring humans to the moon by 2030. So NASA trying to beat them to it 2027. We'll see if that happens on time, Morgan. Space Race is on. Marissa Parr for us, covering it all. Thanks, Marissa. We thank you for watching. And remember, stay updated on breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or watch live on our YouTube channel.